It's been a minute since I've been behind the wheel of the Mack, but we are taking that today. We're hauling four loads today. One load in my pickup truck, three of them in this, one for Dirt Perfect, two of them for us. Let's see what we can get into. I already helped Mike unload a few things this morning. He put 700 miles on his rig, him and Aaron did yesterday. Well, Aaron drove the pickup truck. Wait until you see what they brought back. Oh my gosh. Yep, that's just what we're working with today. It's been a minute since I've driven this rig. So, fingers crossed we don't do anything too bad today. I do hang on to my CDL even though I don't drive full time. When I got my CDL, it was like 100 bucks. Now to get your CDL, it's like five grand in a month of your life, I think. Even though I don't drive often, it's nice to hang on to. It's kind of like a guaranteed job in case anything ever happens. So because of that bridge and another bridge we went over earlier that they keep downgrading the weight limit each year, we got to take the longer way once we're loaded. Empty, we're all right. But once we're loaded, we got to, well, we'll be taking a right here. Peep the view from this rig, huh? Look at that. Check that thing out, huh? That is an absolute trip. So there's another channel, it's called Not Your Average Millennial. Uh, there's a local fella who built this whole thing by hand. His name was Jack Brown. Oh, look, there's a sign on the thing. Well, the Not Your Average Millennial bought this not too long ago. And he has completely redone it, added a tremendous amount onto it. And they're supposedly supposed to get this thing opened up for a rental here before long. And he's got all the videos of the process on his channel. If you're a regular subscriber, can you put his link in the description for me? Check this thing out though. That is, okay, hold on, let's just, look, if the river gets too high, we've got a boat ready to go. Huh, cares about his customers. All right. One place to put extra concrete. So this, can I stand on this? Feels like it. He's putting in a pool right here. How cool would that be? Chilling in the pool, looking at that view. This is slick, man. This place is awesome. I'm not 100% sure how to get turned around here. Mike said he'd been pulling in, cramming it up around this way. We got a new wheel chalk installed there and some stone, so I don't know if that's still gonna work. Uh, I mean, we could try it once. We'll try it once. Tell you what, let's try it twice in case I get the first approach off a little bit. It's gonna take some momentum though. We're gonna run out of traction. Oh. Okay, we're trying for two. Two tries, what did I say? Did I say three tries? I said three tries. Just not quite soon enough. You know what I mean? All right. I'm liking that better. Don't want to put too much twist on the trailers all. I think we're all right. Now 
got to remember how all of this works. I don't know that I do. Let's see, one of these goes up. That one. Nice. And then we got to get those pulled in, which I think is that one. Oh, lovely. And then we drop. So you yeah, just a little bit of play like that. Then we got a little kickstand in here. It comes down. Very nice. Then uh, this maneuver. Then that pin comes up. Holy smokes, he's done it, folks. So I've never hauled this particular lift before. We've used it quite a bit, and I've trucked other lifts for him, but I've never hauled this one. And he said we gotta double the boards up, otherwise it'll punch through the deck. So that is what we will do. Okay, Let's see if we can get this thing on. No overheads, no power lines, nothing like that to worry about. Well, there are power lines right there, though. Well, that would have been bad. Let's get her lined up, then we can adjust those boards as necessary. So he said he runs that counterweight as close to the back, as close to the truck as he can. We're just gonna pull forward or pull that way a little bit more. And then we'll get hooked up and we'll fine tune our parking spot here. too low. Do that with our little kickstand. <laughs> Lifter, we'll sit her down. There it went. Hear it? So she's in there and we know for sure because the keeper engages. Just picking up and setting back down to normally get you when you're close just like that. That's all there is to it. Keeper pins in. We're sitting there. Get our connections. Then we'll get our position finalized. So as close to that rack as we can get it. I got a flag here for my estimate of when the wheel touches. She's over here chirping about the fuel level. Now wouldn't that be something? If the machine was so low that we couldn't even load it. When that wheel touches that flag, we'll get off and check. Right there. I'd say that's good because then I can run right to that D-ring. We'll pull that oversized load sign off, set it down, and we'll run some magnet flags on the back. He is apparently still running the speed binders. So whenever these first came out, people said, how will they hold up? I would say fairly well. I'm just going to make sure there's nothing that's going to blow out of this basket. There's a couple screws laying loose. We'll get all that stuff out. We don't want to lose anything that's going to inconvenience somebody. See these? I can make somebody's day bad. There's a few flat tires saved anyway. So I remember my first time using a toolbox. All right. Quick tug test just to make sure we're attached good. Oh yeah. Oh man. We're just gonna drag his yard and that's just gonna have to be okay. Quite 
question is, can I make that? Oh yeah, we can make that there. Well, that lift is heavy. Wow. The Mac is temporarily parked there until our next trip. We've got the 2500 on the panel now. Probably a little overkill trailer size, but it's the trailer we're gonna run with. Got the spare tire in the back with the jack. Lawn chair in case we gotta wait for somebody to come get us. You know what I mean? It's come along sneaking out. I think you guys are gonna be excited about this one. You've been asking for it for a while. So we made it back from Jeffersonville, Indiana. It's about an hour 15 one way for us. About three hours round trip by the time it was all said and done. A ton of people have been asking how the John Deere 755 rebuild is going. Well, it's going a lot better now. We picked ourselves up the parts tractor. That's what I've been waiting on. We've got the rebuild kit for the engine from Area Diesel Service, including OEM Yanmar injectors. And now we've got all the parts we need for the rest of the build, and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. A little bit of a collision here. The old NASCAR modifications on, so hard left. That's it. Well, let's get the trailer up underneath. We'll be all right. That's for another day. So you guys know we're working on the 755 rebuild there. So I was looking up parts and pieces that I need and I was running the numbers and I thought if I can just find a halfway decent parts tractor, I bet I wouldn't have to buy that many new things from John Deere itself. And this has pretty much everything I need except some seals. You guys know we want to switch tires. Well, look at these things. Those things are awesome. They're in good shape. They might even be filled. They act like they got some weight to them. I definitely love that. We need this shroud here. Definitely need that. I need to get that isolator off in here and look at that because mine's shot. But if that one's in decent shape, we can still run it. I've got the exhaust pipe that came with this one. I was missing that. And the, the big thing that this thing has is it has intact engine mounts. Now, I still got to order uh, new bushings or the new rubber that goes in here, but the engine mounts themselves are intact, which mine were broken, which was leading to a lot of my problems. So not only do we have pretty much our money back already in the parts that this tractor has on it that we can reuse, We've still got the whole machine for anything in the future, and including this. I've fixed one of these up and sold it for 500 bucks before. I bet I could sell this one as is, unknown condition, off a running tractor for a couple hundred bucks. We've got the front, we've got the fiberglass hood, which is in fantastic shape. I've got the side panels, and he had some other miscellaneous parts as well that he sent with it. So we've already got our money's worth out of it, and then we'll have the whole tractor, the transmission, the pump, everything sitting down in the world headquarters when we're done with the rebuild so if we ever have any issues in the future we've got what we need and the other thing is we'll have an engine now this engine is bad he said it was missing or it was dead on number two he left the injectors out bold choice we'll probably just slip them back in so those holes are plugged but there's a chance that there's some decent components on the engine itself that we might be able to reuse in the future as well I'm pretty happy at this purchase 750 bucks doesn't seem too bad So we are back in the Mac, headed north about, how far is this? I think 45 minutes or so. Today you're just getting a whole lot of, well not clutch brake, there we go. A whole lot of clues for what's going on with a lot of projects you guys have been asking about. Cause this is kind of wild. I think this might surprise some people. But I think it's also going to make sense to a lot of people. In the end, it doesn't really matter because it makes sense to me and I'm doing it. Oh, do I have my money? Oh, yeah, no, I got the money. That's good. That'd be embarrassing, huh? 
get all the way up there and be broke. So we are loaded. I don't know if you can see a little hint of it behind me. We got some train tracks with the low boy. Hoping to not become a viral video here. This side looks not as aggressive. Let's take that. All right. Well, here you go. Let me give you the grand tour of the bottom side, and then we'll take a peep in the hood. She's a 90-something. Let's, let's, let's take a gander. One, let's, let's look at the frame. Would you look at the frame? Just look at her. That's a pretty clean frame. Pretty clean. A toolbox? Oh, okay. Is there anything on that? No. Boy, at one point, that would have been an eye-opening experience. Check this out. Look at this. Empty? It's empty, yeah. You can hold it. Frame looks amazing. Look at the dump frame. Look at that. There's still paint on it. Kind of. Look, you can peel it back. Whatever. It's still solid. And the bottom side of the bed is pretty decent, too. I'm not saying it doesn't need cleaned up and painted in the short term, but it's solid now and doesn't take any welding to make any repairs on it. And I love that. And the whole bedside looks good and solid. There's tread on the tires. Yeah, they're a little dry rot, but they're not too bad. Take a peep at the bed here. Let's climb up. Look at that. Solid. Skin looks good on it. Headboard looks solid on it. Everything looks good. Tires on this side are not dry rot. They look fine. Plenty of tread. Got the old battery box here. She is a gasser, a 429, I believe. Now, this tire is flat, but not dry rot and plenty of tread. It smells like mushrooms. It smells like mushrooms? It smells like mushrooms. <laughs> Definitely has a distinct odor. Let's get this thing off. We'll look under the hood in the cab, and then I'll give you a little bit of explanation of why we picked up this dump truck, because the people have been with the channel for a while know that we've been building a dump truck, and then here we came back with one on a trailer. So here's the long and short of it. I'll give you a couple reasons here real quick. Uh, one main reason is the price point, which we'll talk about that here in a second. But I'll tell you, I had $2,500 budgeted for a dump bed for the other dump truck we've been building. So keep that in mind as we talk about this. Also, the other thing that I want to point out about the condition of the frame and things like that, after talking to Clint from CNC Equipment, he said some very wise words of, I would rather rebuild an engine than rebuild a frame. So keep that in mind whenever we're looking at this truck and the condition of this truck and we're talking about what we want to do with it and how well it's gonna work out feasibility wise for the channel. The other truck we've put so much time into, we have completely redone the frame as far as scraping it down, cleaning it up, painting it, redoing the cab, rebuilding the floor. We've redone every single inch out of that thing and made it something out of three trucks. And if you're looking for an update on it, I will tell you, we filmed quite a bit, but we're not putting a video out until it's actually running and driving. We are down to bleeding the clutch, bleeding the brakes, putting the fuel pump in a wiring harness and painting the top of the cab and getting the drive shaft shortened. That's it. We get those things done. Everything else is buttoned up. Window seals, all the seals around the windows, the front clips all put back together. We're down to just a few odds and ends. So we'll be pretty close to having that thing running. Now, with all the effort and time we've put into that truck, I'm having a really hard time convincing myself to throw a dump bed on it and then go driving around the property. Remember the main purpose of this thing is strictly on the property. That's what we want the dump truck for, bringing stuff to the property. It's still more money-wise and time-wise to just rent the triaxles from Dirt Perfect or hire a truck to truck a triaxle's worth of material in at a time. So we're just looking at moving stuff through the woods from one side of the property to the other. And after all the time we put into the other one, I would feel a lot more comfortable just throwing a steel flatbed on it, get a gooseneck ball, and then at the and then next year, after the first of the year, I feel like we spent enough on goodies this year, we'll buy a gooseneck trailer after the first of the year, and we'll be able to pull stuff like the 304 and the 555. And then that way we can kind of somewhat take care of that truck. Now, the catch is I need to try to find a steel flatbed for that truck for around 500 bucks because we spent $2,000 on this rig. 
Now, as far as the backstory and all of that, we'll get into that in a future video whenever we try to get this thing running. That's right, it's the classic Ryan when parked, but we are still under the budget for a bed and we got a whole truck, which is a heavier truck and it's a bigger bed. And like we said, the frame and the bed is all in good shape. So if we have to rebuild an engine, well, I would rather do that than rebuild the frame. That's what we're thinking. First try on this thing all day. Mike shows up, 17 tries, and somehow I broke a tail light. I don't even know how that happens. What you got? Oh, Water and the money back, and you got some Oreos. I got the coins. But I'm keeping the coins. You can keep the coins. I'd love to show you more on that truck. You're just gonna have to stay tuned to the channel because we're trying to beat that weather, and we still gotta go grab the dozer. Neither. We're taking a right. I know that. This might left a tree in the middle of this intersection. Oh, well, it's pretty nice. All right, flashy lights for safety. And then we gotta like back in this driveway. Okay, I'm gonna have to get out up here and see which way I need to go. So I'm not 100% sure. He told me a specific spot to offload at, or to load at, I gotta make sure I'm headed in the right area. So he said back all the way down into here. So he said back all the way down into here. He said keep the dozer off the finished stone. So that makes sense now. We just gotta get her crammed in here. Makes I felt a little nervous about coming up out of here, but I think we'll be okay. This is that Hyundai HD 100 finish dozer he's been trying out. I don't know anything about it. I have not ran it. Fingers crossed it's not too complicated. And we can actually get the thing on the trailer. Guess we can just leave that. Oh, how you guys doing? There's no, I got a car key. Same key they use in their Hyundais. Hyundai Sonatas. Welcome. Oh, thanks. I appreciate that. Oh, all right. Step one. Step two, blade. We got one of those? Nope. Nope. Parking. Oh. Uh-huh. Oh, is there... You got a seat belt? I bet you got a seat belt. There we go. Seat belts for safety. I tell you what. What will they think of next? I want to go forwards? I don't know. Here's like, I got reverse. You want to know how to run this thing? I feel like it would be intuitive. It is not. Was the diesel pedal not diesel? Oh, there we go. Now we got her, bud. Now we got her. Now we got her. Now, we're doing things now. Fingers crossed we know how to stop it. You know what I mean? We're just going. Is there a, where's the gear indicator? There's gotta be a, I'm comparing everything to a cat, which probably isn't the smartest thing. She is, she's, she's not what I would call smooth, but you know, neither am I. She's, she's something. Where, there's gotta be a. That's something. Hope nobody takes a video of this and posts it on the internet. It'd be pretty embarrassing. Yeah, get me out of this thing. The heck does that mean? I don't know. If we turn it off, it's not my problem. We're gonna back her up close and with that hill, it's kind of hard for me to tell what's going on elevation of the hitch so we're gonna get close and I'm gonna get out and make some adjustments I don't know let's just see what she feels like actually didn't feel terrible 
Oh, she looks mint, boys. She looks mint. She dropped for us. We'll get her go. Love it. Love it. All right, we got four corners in the blade. Definitely, definitely. I would take my word on that. Connection's good, that's good. Safety's in, pins are out. Deck is certainly five mile clean. Tug test and we're gone. right there we bottomed out on the bottom side of the trailer hopefully we can just get this thing lifted up and uh, up and over that hump and then when we get out to the flat spot we'll lower it back down to where it needs to go Anytime you're watching those videos where they get stuck on the tracks, like railroad tracks, just know if a fella has time, all you gotta do is raise the deck up. That is an option. We're sitting back down on the pins. We are ready to go. Dozer is back. Oh, caught in the action. The dozer is back down to the lot. I'm just gonna come down in the morning and get her offloaded though. A little late in the evening, we got some other stuff we got to attend to. But now you know what's happened to 755. We got a parts tractor and parts from area diesel service, so we'll be tearing into that real soon in the next couple weeks. You know our plans with the dump truck project, a few things to tidy up a steel flatbed, and that thing will hopefully be done by the end of October next video is going to be trying to get that thing seen if it does actually just fire up. We're going to clean the fuel system, go through it, try to get it fired up, and uh, see if it doesn't run, dump, and do all of that. So some questions answered. Oh, and the man lift parked over there so we can do the tree trimming at the world headquarters so we can finish the parking area. This day of hauling pretty much tells you what we're doing in October. A whole lot of finishing up loose ends. I'm excited about it. I hope you guys are too. And I'll catch you on the next one.